If you're struggling to get engagement on Instagram and you want to educate your audience in a fun way, you need to try creating carousels. In today's video, I'm going to teach you exactly how to create an Instagram carousel in Canva. Let's do this. Hi my loving people, it's Natalia and welcome back to my channel where I share super action ideas on content creation for entrepreneurs and creatives. And today you're in for another Canva tutorial which will teach you exactly how to create a carousel for Instagram in Canva. For those of you who don't know what carousels are, these are the types of posts containing multiple images which you can swipe and they usually contain valuable information in a compelling graphic form. They're a fantastic way to share educational content but of course the possibilities are endless with carousels so it's not limited just to education. And apart from that, Instagram carousels usually gain more traction not only because of the value they provide but also because they actually keep your audience on the post for longer and they're super easy to share. Plus if you're not that comfortable with personally showing up on your Instagram it's a great alternative to build an online presence without ever having to show your face. So let's hop onto Canva and create our first carousel post. First, let's create a custom dimension image. And in order to do that, you can go to that purple button here saying create a design. And here at the bottom, you've got custom size. So this is where my first tip is. I actually like to make the most of the real estate that's allowed on Instagram. I know the most popular format is the square one, the 1080 pixels by 1080 pixels, which corresponds to one to one ratio. However, Instagram actually lets you post images or videos in four to five ratio, which means you can post images that are sized up to 1,350 by 1,080 pixels. And I really like to put this space to good use with calls to action, any important information. And you know, such images usually show up as bigger on people's feeds when they're scrolling and therefore they attract more attention. So of course, if you prefer, you can stick to the traditional square format with 1080 by 1080 pixels. What I want to create is actually a seamless carousel and a seamless carousel is basically a rolling kind of image. So when you scroll, you see that it completes the whole image rather than having separate slides each time you scroll. And in order to do that, you need to multiply that 1080 pixels by the amount of slides that you want. So let's say today we're going to create five slides for this carousel, which means that the width needs to be 1080 times five. So that is five 1,400 pixels by my chosen height, which is 1,350 pixels. So let's hit create new design and we'll get to the editor now. So now that we've got our blank canvas, what we need to do is to be able to imagine our slides is to enable guides in Canva. So let's go to file in here and first show rulers and then show guides. And what you can do is kind of pull from here and go to 1080 roughly. I know it's quite difficult when the slide is so small, but yeah, 1079 should be absolutely fine. And we keep going until we've got the whole grid. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect just because we'll be slicing that image separately later on and it will be done automatically for us. So it's just a rough estimate on where the edges will be. Now let's choose a background color. So we can hit that icon in here, choose new color, and let's play around with some colors and see what fits our brand. What we want to do next is of course to have some text on our carousel. So let's go to text in the panel in here and add a heading and we can add headings to each of these slides. However, you need to remember that the first slide of your carousel is kind of your hook. So we need to have that value proposition, what people will be getting out of that carousel straight from the get go. So this is where your heading is the most important part. So this is Yeseva one. Let's change that one to Yeseva. And I'll ungroup this one just to grab the other one just to make it safer for me and quicker. Let's move it in here for now. And let's say this carousel is going to say how to get endless ideas for content. So let's say that. And since it's centered, I want it to be aligned to left. So let's select it like this. And as you can see, it's a bit big. So let's make it smaller like this, move it around. And I might actually change the spacing of it. So I don't like the line height. Let's make it a bit kind of closer, just like that. I like this one. And let's just make sure that this design actually has enough breathing space for it to exist. I like to make sure that there, there's enough margin for everything. So I'm kind of making it smaller. And let's make the text a bit smaller. 
just to fit that ideas one in here. Perfect, just like that. And let's align it to that edge in here. I've actually forgotten to do one thing. So what we want to make sure is to know what gets displayed on our feed once we post that image. So I explained at the very beginning that this is a taller image. So when people are scrolling through their feed, they'll be able to see the whole image and it's bigger, it displays nicely. But then when you go to your actual profile, we don't want any bits cut off because the profile still consists of the square images. So what you want to do next is to go to elements in here, find a square. So I'll just hit that square in here, drag it to the side just like that, make it bigger so that it kind of roughly fits that line, that guide that we've created for ourselves. And then let's position it to the middle. And that shows you exactly where your feed ends in a way. So where the image gets displayed on your feed. So what you want to do next is to drag that guide in here and kind of snip it to the edge of it. And then we can remove that square. And this way you see where your safe area is. So where you need to kind of position your text and your elements that get displayed nicely in your feed. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, we want to put that extra space to good use. And this is where I like to introduce my IG handle, or maybe you can put your website in there as well. So this is obviously your choice, but I like to do it at that stage. So let's throw in some elements and I'll put Instagram in here, just in the elements. And let's choose that icon. We can change, I mean, we won't change the colors just now. Let's align it to that and make it smaller. Let's make it bigger in here so you can see it clearly. Let's go up and center it in here roughly. Next, I'll just duplicate that text in here to stay consistent with the fonts. Drag it along to align with this. And this way, if anyone shares that image to their stories, this Instagram handle is still there. So it kind of reinforces the idea and makes sure that people actually know where it came from. So let's go back and see how it fits within the whole frame. Yes, I like the way it looks. Now we want to visually cue people in to actually swipe. So let's add an arrow in here. That was just added. It's absolutely huge, just massive. We definitely don't need anything that massive. So let's move it to the bottom in here and align it to the margin as it shows in here change it to black like this. And this way people know that they need to scroll as well. And just to make sure that when people share particular slides, not just the first one, that they actually get that handle, the IG handle in there and maybe some arrows as well. Let's copy that one to each and every, every slide. Let's duplicate it. And this way it will show up on each. Okay, we've got our handles at the top in here. So let's add a wee arrow as well on each post. And in this case, I've chosen just the arrow tip just to be able to have a small reminder, nothing too overpowering. So I'll make sure to zoom in on this arrow and I'll align it by hand perfectly. Let's put it lower just to center it in between the two and we can start duplicating. So let's hit fit this design to be able to see the whole thing. And I'll hide that left panel just to make sure that it's bigger and I can see it properly. So if you select that element and hit alt, if you drag it, then it will kind of duplicate that one and Canva shows you the guide. So you see that it's exactly um, horizontally aligned. And let's move ahead with these ones just like that. I mean, the last one will be scrolled, so we don't need the last one. Now that we've got everything perfectly aligned, um, I've actually decided to keep it with my personal brand color. So let's go back to that background color and change it to mine. We can add certain elements just to be able to make that kind of endless seamless carousel. So let's go to elements and let's search for blob. And this will give us some kind of abstract shapes that we can use to make our carousel a bit more interesting. And we can align it in here, kind of play around with it and change the color to something lighter. This is how I structure my, my carousels. So let's push it to the back as, as you've seen just a second ago. And I'll just kind of rotate it, see how it fits the whole image. And as you can see in here, you've got so many different options. Um, I'll show you in a moment how we can actually incorporate images into that as well. But I'll just kind of play around with these different elements and I'll get back to you once I've got these done. 
And as you can see, when I'm designing with these blobs, I'm trying to incorporate them on each of the designs. And at the same time, I'm not kind of cutting through these elements that I've added. So through my IG handle or the arrows, I'm trying for the whole image to sort of come together because this way the carousel is very kind of nice to the eye and it's nicely balanced in this way. And as you can see, you can add different lines, you can add blobs, you can add different things to it. Um, let's see if I can find some other elements that would fit this. So I kind of like the idea of these lines. So I'll add some of them and they'll be white just to kind of make it fit the whole image. Now we've got a rough design ready. And as you can see, these different blobs are kind of cutting through the different sides. So once we slice the whole image, which I'll show you at the very end, you'll be able to seamlessly scroll through these different posts and you'll be able to see how they kind of come together as a whole. And of course, not everyone will want to use these abstract shapes to make the graphics more dynamic. So instead, what you can actually do is to incorporate cutout images just to make it more interesting. So I'll show you how to do it. So you can go to photos in here and you can search for PNG. And this will give you cutout elements that you can incorporate into your design. And as you can see, when we're scrolling down, there are so many different elements that you can choose from. So make sure to stay on brand and choose something that fits yours in particular. Let's choose that coffee mug in here. You can put it like this, maybe rotate it and make sure to place it within the range of both um, different slides. And this way it will make the whole carousel a bit more interesting. Um, if you're a food business, for example, if you're sharing recipes that way, there are plenty of different kind of food options for you. So you can search for PNG food. And this way you have, you know, kiwi, broccoli, you've got different kind of lobsters and things of that nature. So you can add them to your design as well. Again, doesn't really go that well with my design just because I've got these different kind of um, IG handles at the very top, but you could use it without that or place it kind of similarly so that it doesn't cover anything. You know, you can have a lemon like this in here. Just make sure that it kind of works for you and place it in between the different slides. So when people are actually scrolling, they get that seamless experience from that carousel. So I'll delete these elements because they don't go again with my design. So let's finish off that one carousel and I'll show you how to do it with the different um, slides. And since my brand color is actually not black, let's change that color to that navy one from my main color palette. And as you can see at the bottom, Canva will show you how to change all of the text. So if you're using the styles or anything that you're adding from Canva automatically, you can just simply change all the colors to that one and it, as you can see it applies it. I think that particular element wasn't changed uh, just because it doesn't apply to elements. So I'll just change these arrows at the bottom as well and you'll be able to um, see what it looks like. So next, let's focus on the very end of our carousel. And this is where you want to actually have some calls to action and to entice people to either watch more, to go watch your video off the platform, to save your post, to like your post, depending on what you actually want from that particular post, you can have that CTA at the very end. So what I like to do personally for my carousels is to put myself on them. Since this is usually at just basically a text, but you can of course add different photos to it. I want to make sure that at the very end, that call to action is added with my photo. So I've got my uploads in here, I've got the different photos. So let's choose my photo from here and I'll go to effects and remove background. This is the option that's only available for Canva Pro users. So as a free user, you won't be able to actually incorporate that, but there are different tools that you can use off um, Canva to actually remove your background. So you can just Google and remove background and there'll be a few free options. So I'm adding myself to that very last slide in here. Again, it makes it a bit more personal. It reinforces the idea that there is a person behind these carousels that's providing that value. So this is what I like to do for the end screen. So the next thing I want to do to that particular image is to add a stroke. And this is the effect that you see very often on YouTube thumbnails, just to make that image stand out a bit more. I'll go to the effects 
and if you scroll down a little you've got different shadow options so you can just add a drop shadow but I'll choose glow for that particular one just because I'm going after a certain effect and if you click on it again it will let you adjust the parameters so let's change the color to white just because this is kind of what's on brand for my particular design I will go down with the blur because I don't want that kind of blurry aura around it. I want a very kind of solid background and you can change the size of it as well. So at this stage, let's copy the headings as well to each of the slides and then we can kind of play around with them and adjust them. But I want them to be um, the same size on each slide just to make it cohesive and look the same on each slide. Of course, that's not to say that each of those need to be in the same order. So I'll show you in a moment once I kind of fill that with the different ideas and you'll see what I end up with. I've populated the whole carousel with different types of content. And just to kind of run you through what I've done, I'm trying to keep things interesting in terms of kind of moving things around, changing the order of the headline and uh, the subheading, just to make it a bit more interesting. And when people slide through my carousel, they don't get the exact same thing each time they slide. So it still stays on brand. You can see that the fonts are the same and the colors are the same, but I've added a few elements to make it interesting. So for example, on that second slide, you've got the different elements that I've added from Canva elements within that editor. So it's not like I'm kind of uploading anything, although you do, you, you can do that. The third one is actually quite simple. Then you've got the different kind of ticks, different um, points to that slide. And then at the very end, I've added a CTA, a call to action, as I mentioned before. So this says, click the link in my bio to watch my new YouTube video. And of course, this carousel is not finished. I would say if that was to be posted on my Instagram account, I would definitely add a bit more value to it. So probably a few more slides but at the moment just to show you for the sake of this presentation this is what it roughly looks like and again as I've mentioned at the very beginning you want to have that hook you want to know from the get-go on your first slide what your audience is getting from that carousel then a few more kind of interesting elements throughout and then at the very end you want to have the strong call to action and actually at this point I will show you what to actually do to get more engagement from these carousels so let me fit that screen in here let me make it a bit bigger just to scroll in here so as you can see, you've got that Instagram handle in here. You've got the call to action. I've even added my YouTube thumbnail in here just to vis help visualize that particular video that they will be watching, hopefully. But what I want to do is to entice people to actually take action on Instagram as well, because that, again, contributes to that whole overall engagement rate of your um, Instagram profile. So what I want to do is to include like and save button. This is my preference for this particular post. Uh, of course, you may want to entice your followers to actually share that maybe to, your, to their stories or with their friends. So you may change that to a share. So really think about what you want to get from that particular post. You can have a comment in there as well if you choose to do so. But I'll just show you how to include like button. So what I like to do just to make sure that these correspond to the actual buttons that will be displayed below that slide. I want to make sure that they're exactly in the same spot. So what I've actually done, I've taken a screenshot on my phone of a random Instagram post. So I've got that in my uploads already. So I would highly recommend you actually go to an Instagram profile, any Instagram profile, any of kind of the feed, the posts on your feed, take a screenshot and then upload it to Canva. You can do it directly from your phone if you've got a Canva app on your phone. And then once you take that screenshot and upload it, I'll show you how you can actually make sure that this is displayed properly on your post. So let's click on that upload. I've got that uploaded already from before. It pops up in here. I'll position it to front. I'll move it around to the last slide and kind of amend that to fit the screen. And I should actually give a shout out to the person that I screenshotted. It's something white. 
is a girl on Instagram that shares a lot of educational content around fashion, a lot of inspiration from there. And she's actually helping me build a, a capsule war wardrobe in a way. So I really enjoy watching her. So, you know, if, you, if you're into that type of content, make sure to go to her Instagram and check her out. But what I like to do is to kind of amend um, that size to the last slides. As you can see, it kind of fits within my guides and I'll make it bigger, I'll scroll down, and as you can see, it shows me exactly where that button is. So I can then go ahead and add my save element or like element, because these, again, are my goals for this particular post, and I'll show you how it's done, and they'll be perfectly aligned to where that button will be on people's feet. So let's go to elements, let's search for a heart, just like that. I'm just looking for an outline. Some something like this should do it. It always adds it right in the middle of the screen. So it's quite annoying when you're creating carousel like that, but I'll position it forwards just to be able to grab it from here, move it around to there. Let's make it smaller. I'll change the color for now just to be able to position it correctly um, within that one. But let's add another element. Again, it's not ideal, it's not the same one, but just for the purpose of this presentation, I'll change the color of this one um, for now as well. It might not be the one that I end up with, but let's move it to that screen and here at the very end, and then I can amend it from there so I can make it bigger. Let's go to 50% just to be able to see that from here and let's make it smaller to just roughly fit that one icon from here. And again, as you can see, it doesn't kind of snap in place, so I'll move it with my arrows, just like that, it's in the right spot, and let's um, choose that like one, let's make it smaller, try and align it as closely to that as possible. Now that I've got these um, two in place, let's say this is what I'm happy with, I can just delete that screenshot from behind. So this is why I actually like to keep that screenshot in there. Obviously, as you can see, this is pretty small. Let me drag it down so that it's visible in here. So I'm holding shift and dragging it down. Okay, so I've actually decided to change it to something a bit thicker. So I've chosen a thicker element from here, but never mind. I'll just keep kind of editing so that you can see what I do with it. And I position them kind of within that lower tier, the, within that lower kind of extra space that we've created um, with the size of this post. So I've got that like, and it will correspond to the like button below and the save button, which will correspond to the save button below on Instagram feed. So what I want to do is add the secondary kind of calls to action. So I'll add the text saying like for this one and saying saved it for this one and maybe add a bit of an arrow. So we can add a text from here using that and then elements, you can just go to lines. So we've got our secondary calls to action in here. So anytime someone sees that image, they're enticed to click the link in the bio to go watch the YouTube video. But if they choose not to actually go away from Instagram to YouTube, they can actually like the photo, save it. I feel like it's very important to reinforce that idea with graphic elements on your designs or whether you're on YouTube as well. Any call to action kind of encouraged by that visual definitely stimulates your audience to actually click, take that action that you're asking them to take. This is the finished carousel. This is what it looks like. So I'll show you how to actually export it and then slice it into different images so you can create that carousel on your Instagram profile. So let's go to download it and we can select PNG. Let's hit download and that should download that whole file to your computer. Now that we've got our image downloaded, let's go to Pine Tools and this way we'll be able to actually split our image into smaller parts. So this is pinetools.com. Let's hit that and you can search for different tools in here. So let's say split and that should pull up split an image into smaller pieces. So once you get in there, you can choose your file. So let's upload our file in here. Let me select the one that I need. That uploads the image in here and we want horizontal splits. Uh, we want PNG just because that's my choice um, of a format that I like to upload to Instagram. Then quantity of blocks. So this, is this will be the number of the slices, the number of the different images that you will have. In my case, this is five. So let's go up to five and then simply hit split image and you can download these different pieces. Let me show you what one of them looks like so you can see. 
just like that. You download each and every one of those and I'll show you how to actually upload it to your Instagram. Now that I've got all the images on my phone, let's go to Instagram. We can hit that plus button at the top to add a new photo um, we can choose the first slide that we want to upload and let's hit that little icon in here in the left uh, corner these little arrows and that will make sure that we are uploading the whole image um, then let's hit that layers little icon and then let's choose the rest of the slides in the order that we want them to appear so let's go and select them like this I've got all of them selected let's hit next then next, I'm not going to apply any filters. I would write a caption, tag people, add location, alt text, all that jazz in here. But let's hit share like this and let me show you what it looks like on my feed once I post it. Perfect, so this is now posted and I can just click on it like this. You can see that the little secondary calls to action correspond to the buttons in here just as I intended to. And when you go back to my feed, you can actually see um, that the kind of extra space is cut off. So everything's perfect just as I wanted it to be. Want to know what to actually post on Instagram to keep it interesting and grow your audience? Check out this video to get endless ideas for content. And if you don't have a social media strategy, you have to get one stat. In this video, I'm showing you exactly what you need to know to build a solid strategy yourself and catapult your growth. And I'm throwing in a free content marketing strategy workbook so you know exactly what to do. Are you a fan of Instagram carousels? If so, let me know in the comment section down below whether you're already creating some yourself or if you like to learn from them. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this tutorial and subscribe to my channel for more content marketing tips. As always, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time.